Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Ford. We welcome you to tonight's close basketball contest between the visiting Raiders of North Quincy High School and your Quincy Presidents. Participating student athletes, coaches, contest officials have worked diligently today to prepare for today's competition. Please show your appreciation by demonstrating good sportsmanship and respect for all in attendance. For those in attendance, please wear your mask at all times. First, the lineup for North Quincy High School. That guard of freshman number four, Kobe Newman. That guard of junior number 22, Nate Caldwell. That guard of junior number 31, Zach Taylor. That forward of senior captain, number 23, Colin Geary. And at forward, our sophomore captain, number 25, Doggy Quinn. North Quincy is coached by Kevin Barrett. And now, the lineup for your Quincy presence. And for the senior number three, Malik Lawson. That forward is senior number 40, Zach Donahue. That forward is senior captain number 5, Coleman Ross. And that forward a senior captain number 11, Joey Manton. Head coach of the Presidents is Dave Perry. And now if you can all please rise and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Hello everyone and welcome to Quincy High School where tonight the Quincy Presidents will play host to crosstown rival North Quincy Raiders. My name is Jonathan Calary and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QATV Sports. Being joined by Jim Timmons up here on the track at Quincy High School. And Jim, second time these teams have met here this season. And uh, Quincy High School trying to look to get a win in the win column and North Quincy looking to continue along as they get ready to trek into the playoffs. Yeah, this game perhaps will not be as interesting as the girls game was because uh, the North team is just steaming along and Quincy's struggling. But we'll see what happens because you just never know. John, before we start, I, I hope that our audio did justice to that a cappella rendition of the national anthem we just heard. That was four students from Quincy High School. 
who were just absolutely spectacular. Um, they just stood there with a microphone, four kids behind the uh, audio table, and uh, did a wonderful job with that. Very beautiful. So let's hope that uh, the players can match that performance tonight. Our underway here, Dahi Quinn, sophomore for the Raiders, gets in scoreboard quick. First two points of the ball game. Yeah, and Quinn made it look easy and effortless as well. Um, they just get it to him in the post, and he turned and finished. So, Quinn averaging 22.4 points this season. Patriot League leader in that category as well. Yeah, Dahi Quinn and Orla Gormley are just turning the world on fire at North Quincy High School. Two uh, Celtic Warriors on the basketball court. Oh! Joe Manton, big three-pointer for the Presidents. Yeah, Mr. Manton is going to let them know that uh, there's a game to be played tonight here, so he just stepped into that one confidently. Zach Donahue, full court pressure there for the Presidents against Kobe Nguyen. And Nguyen down low, and can't get it to go, but stepping out of bounds for North Quincy with Zach Taylor, Presidents ball. Yeah, Quincy playing man-to-man -man defense, and um, North trying to turn over shots quickly against that defense. Now they're coming out in a 2-2-1 zone press. Uh, nice full court press. Quincy having trouble with it. They've got, got the ball over after uh, working for eight seconds to do so. So they're just getting into their offense with 15 seconds on the shot clock, which is the point of a 2-2-1 press. Malik Lawson driving in. Pass gets deflected away. Dahi Quinn coming down court. Nice pass inside. We're going to have our first foul shots of the game. Great look by Quinn inside. Um, and a nice job of running the floor by uh, number 31, Zach Taylor. So Taylor's going to go, for, go to the line for two foul shots on what would have been a nice assist if the ball had dropped uh, from Quinn. So Taylor misses the first. And sticks the second. So we're looking at a 3-3 tie here. First two minutes of the ball game. North Quincy come with their own full court pressure again. Malik Lawson gets it across now for the Presidents. Yeah, Quincy doing a better job that time with the pressure. North falls out of the 2-2-1 into a man-to-man. -man. Lost a nice turn going baseline, just a little short. Could not come up with his own rebound. The win bringing it up now for the Raiders. Yeah, that was a nice little spin move by Malik Lawson, playing very confidently in his home gym. Well, nice look down low for Dahi Quinn, and Quinn puts it up and can't get it to roll, though. And foul's going to be called on Quinn is on the reach-in. Well, he did everything he wanted to do, but this is an interesting dynamic about the Quincy High School backboard. Um, you know, most backboards, the block is painted white. Here it's painted blue, so it's not as visible a target. And that time you saw that affect the Dahi Quinn shot. Um, he did not use the, uh, he used the backboard, but he wasn't able to use the little block there. And um, it's another one of the dynamics that makes shooting a basketball difficult in this gymnasium. So North's got to make some adjustments, and we'll look for them to do so over time. But Tied at three, five minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Taylor trying to go baseline, and they're going to call a foul on number five, Coleman Ross, on the push. Yeah, Ross went over to cut off the baseline, but he got there late and ended up hitting the cutting Zach Taylor uh, with his body. So. North comes out with a little box set up under the hoop. Paul Gary got stuck underneath the hoop. Zach Donahue. He's trying to find Johnny Garcia Costa, and ball gets tipped away into the hands of Nate Caldwell. 
Yeah, terrific defensive play by Nate Caldwell there on a 2-1-1. He was able to get the uh, intercept the pass to a wide open. Quincy uh, president who would have had an easy layup. But Caldwell with great defense on the 2-1-1. North comes down and couldn't convert. President's back on their end. Looking to break this early 3-3 tie. Ross with the ball, gives it up to Manton. And it's a back over the Ross, nine on the shot clock. Manton takes the three at the end of the clock and no good. Caldwell comes down with a loose ball. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when you're taking a step back three with no time left on the clock. And that was a harbinger for what was to come, which was an air ball. Quinn, quick pull up three, in and out, no good. Fight for the rebound down low. Ross comes up with it. This is going to be an interesting matchup tonight. Um, Malik Lawson and uh, Nate Caldwell. Nice steal there by Zach Taylor. He comes down and lays it in. Lawson gave a nice chase from behind, almost was able to uh, cause some disruption there, but able to put it in was Taylor. Ball comes loose. Lawson gets it back. Donahue driving into the paint, loses his dribble. Five on the shot clock. Johnny Garcia Costa, no good, a little too strong on the shot. Quinn driving baseline, nice block there by Garcia Costa, and they're going to call a foul. It looks like they're going to call it on Manton, and they do. Shot there is no good. Quinn misses both foul shots. It's the matchup I was talking about, John. It's going to be very interesting watching Caldwell battle uh, Lawson here. Lawson's been very confident and assertive, but Caldwell very, very athletic. Uh, we've seen a couple of uh, plays here tonight, and his pressure on Lawson's going to be a key for North tonight. Kayla Parson Gomes has checked in for the Presidents, as well as Jimmy Phipps. Caldwell shoots the three from the corner and hits it. This is a very balanced North Quincy High team. They have several guys who do everything well, led by Quinn, of course. Parson Gomes, nice job by him. He goes in, he'll get a foul to go to the line to shoot. The extra shot. Yeah, great job by Quincy of calmly breaking that press. They've, be, they've become more assertive with it. They're now attacking the press. They did an excellent job doing so um, on that particular play. And then uh, getting over uh, to defend on the layup. A little late was Colm Geary to pick up the foul. We got an old-fashioned three-pointer right there. Donahue still putting that full court pressure on Kobe Nguyen. Gary with it. Ross comes up, puts pressure on. Quinn drives into the paint, and no foul called. Quincy comes down with the ball. Yeah, Dahi Quinn is so physical, John. He really is. Created contact there, and as you said, no foul called. Gonna get Caldwell outside. 
It's a little late trying to stay with Lawson. Ty Neal checking in now for the Presidents. Neal with the ball back over now to Lawson. 20 on the shot clock for the Presidents. Trying to get it down low to Caleb Parson Gomes, but nice defense by Zach Taylor. Lost in a long three off the back of the rim, rebounded by Ross. They got a fresh 30 and they're going to reset. Parson Gomes, nice fake there, but can't get its roll, gets his own rebound down low. And Colm Gary's able to strip it away and come up with it. Oh, great play there by. Parson Gomes, but couldn't hold on to it, so remain North Ball. Coach Perry getting a timeout here, I believe. Well, I'm not sure who called it. Who did, did they indicate who called it? I th I'm not sure. I thought they said North Quincy, but I could be wrong. Okay. Well, a little timeout because the game, frankly, got a little sloppy here at the end of the first quarter, John. Um, it's 8-6 North Quincy, uh, but both teams kind of absorbing the initial adrenaline flow from all the excitement and noise in the gym, finally settling down, but uh, they've settled into a little bit of sloppiness. So this is a good timeout, trying to get the boys to reset and refocus. You see both coaches with their little boards out reviewing things and um, they're both trying to give the uh, players some direction and focus as we complete this first quarter. It's a nice crowd tonight John. I don't know if we've got too many crowd shots but you see the camera there. It's interesting the the Quincy High Gym the setup is uh, you can tell it was done by an architect because uh, just the way, well, here we're panning the arena now, and you see that big gap in the middle where the doors are, um, and, you know, there's a couple of sets of stands. This, this gym could accommodate a lot more seating. Uh, there are plenty of people standing under both hoops. You can see that. There are people up here on the track. So great crowd tonight again for this crosstown rivalry. Taylor driving into the paint, finds himself open, and finishes it off for the two points. Yeah, nice smooth finish by Taylor off the dribble penetration. Quincy just does get the ball across half court. Yeah, after handling the press very well on a couple of occasions, that was a, uh, a bit of a slow one there. Ty Neal right. open for three. No good. Quinn comes down with a rebound. Nice no look pass. Colm Geary open down court and he puts it in. Geary with a great finish. Just very smooth and assertive to the hoop. There's seven seconds left, so Quincy does not have time to fiddle with his press. And look at this here. Nice, nice little take by Malik Lawson. Very assertive, but he came up short with the jumper so um, not a bad first quarter for both teams um, Quincy not as close as they wish uh, the president's a little balky as far as offensive flow goes um, 12 points is not the usual performance um, but they did play pretty solid defense John all right 12 6 at the end of the first quarter of play both teams have two more games after this game the Presidents still be hosting the Vin Moscadelli Basketball Tournament on President's Day, February 21st, and on Tuesday, February 22nd. The Presidents will open up against Southeastern Regional Votech on Monday, and then they will play either Milton or Stoughton on Tuesday. For North Quincy, they're back in action on President's Day as well. They're going to be hosting Snowden, and then on Wednesday the 23rd, they'll be hosting Plymouth South at the North Quincy Gym. Uh, remember, there's vacation week next week here, so these teams will have uh, some games to play. And then we'll be getting ready to go into the um, uh, MIAA basketball tournament 
North Quincy currently is ranked number five in Division Two with a 14 and four record. Uh, so they're going to be looking to host a home game and hopefully they can uh, get some action in the tournament and make a little bit of a run. Oh yeah, I expect that's going to happen. And a big, big edge for the Red Raiders, Coach Kevin Barrett. And he's very ably assisted by a pretty big staff, but among them, uh, there are several Goulds, Ned, Pat, and Dan, all guys with tournament experience. Um, they've been there, so the coaching staff has been deep in this MIAA state tournament, and I think they have the talent they feel can can go there as well. So we'll see what these boys can do. And uh, there's a young man right there who is a heck of an athlete and uh, stuck a three, Nate Caldwell. Coach Perry upset over a pick center court, but frankly it was executed properly by North Quincy and uh, no one told Malik Lawson it was coming. So oftentimes when a proper pick is executed and the guy gets hurt, it's not the fault of the team executing the pick. It's his, his teammates who don't let him know. So that, that was the problem on that play. Hopefully Malik's leg is okay. And um, Coach Perry with a quick timeout to reset things as the Red Raiders uh, with that three-pointer stretch the lead to nine. I can certainly tell from experience, Jim, when a, a screen's coming and you don't know it and you run straight into it, <laughs> it catches you by surprise and, you know, you're kind of upsetting your teammates there for not calling it out, oh, uh, especially yeah. as you're running full speed up court. Yeah, that attitude has changed, though. It's, lately, you always see coaches complaining about picks, not the team. That was one of those things you settled on the floor with your own teammates normally. Anyway, back to the action. Lawson is okay, which is a good sign for the presidents. He's done an excellent job in this game of being assertive. And here's another guy who's been extremely assertive as well for the presidents. Lawson open for two, can't get it to roll. Jack Taylor with the rebound. Yeah, Joe Manton playing a nice game in the first quarter. Oh, nice little give and go. But again, that backboard, these North, uh, the Quincy High Rims prove beguiling for the Red Raiders here. They just can't drop a shot. And as, as I mentioned, there's all kinds of little factors here. And here comes North. Oh! A Euro step layup there. That was executed <laughs> beautifully. I'll tell you, back in the halcyon days of my high school career, I don't think anyone knew. There'd be all groin pulls, <laughs> not, not layup finishes. Zach Taylor with a beautiful finish, strong take to the hole. So, But I was alluding earlier, or saying earlier, if you can get a look at the backboards here, um, you're going to see behind the rim uh, you don't see the traditional white box. It's painted blue here. Now, the North Quincy kids who have the friendliest backboards in North America, we talk about that all the time when we're in the gym, they're all trained to use those backboards and in particular to use the white box behind the rim. Here in this gym, that white box is not there. It's a blue one, and uh, there's other blue trim around the backboard, so it's tough for the kids to make the adjustment. But uh, Zach Taylor threw all of that out of whack with that beautiful Euro step layup, and uh, North Quincy is up 17 6. Coach Perry using his timeouts early, trying to keep this game close. Lawson, top of the key, driving in, and he can't get it to roll, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Great job there. What you've seen after the timeouts is the Quincy boys are coming out, taking the ball to the hoop. What uh, Coach Parry is trying to do is have the boys stay aggressive, see if they can't create some foul problems for North Quincy, and uh, get to the guys to the free throw line. Of course, they got to hit their free throws. And uh, unfortunately, from the president perspective, Malik Lawson missed the first. But he sticks the second. Good job by Malik. Hanging in there. And, and they got a turnover against the Raiders. A little confusion there. It looked like between 
Quinn and Nguyen. Ball goes out of bounds. Johnny Garcia Costa has checked into the game, puts a shot up, can't get it to go, fighting for the rebound. Loose ball into the hands of North Quinn's number 24, Dylan Clifford. Ethan Gao into the game for the Raiders as well. Can't get that shot to go, but he comes up with the rebound. Austin driving in, and a little too much on that shot. Q Scott with the rebound for the Raiders. Kobe Nguyen kicks it out. Quinn wide open for three, taking his time. Can't get it to roll. Okay, we have bodies everywhere. Coach Perry upset again, but the official saying that was uh, a proper pick. Um, and I, I, I agree with him. Uh, the Quincy kids are getting caught in the open court, and a couple of them have been really laid out. The official is trying to clarify because he's getting some chirping from players that, uh, you know, it's a clean pick. So. Quincy is responding by bringing a uh, big body in. Actually, it's just you, what they're doing is they have to get Coleman Ross off the court. He really got laid out there. Um, coming in for him is Caleb Parsons going. So North Quincy's got the lead at 19 to 7, John, with 5.40 to go in this first half. Scott makes both foul shots and almost comes up with a steal. Remain President's ball. Yeah, North is uh, staying with pressure here. Even though they have a big lead, um, 12 points, especially that's four three-pointers or six buckets. Um, you know, when you've only got a, uh, a double-digit lead close to 10 here, you do not want to let the other team back in the ball game. And Coach Barrett here is having his boys stay very aggressive on defense. He does not want to have a situation that the girls faced in their game where the Quincy girls hung in there the whole game um, and did a terrific job of giving themselves an opportunity to win at the end. Uh, Coach Barrett wants to make sure the, the presidents don't feel the same sort of confidence and opportunity. Fight for the rebound down low. It's controlled by Dylan Clifford. Yeah, Dylan's been huge on the boards here early on. Ethan Gow, nice cut to the hope. A nice defense there by Joe Manton. Quinn shoots up the three, but he's going to get fouled, and he'll go to line to shoot three. Yeah, there was a terrific backdoor cut um, executed by North Quincy. Kobe Nguyen, the other Kobe, and uh, his teammate, Ethan Gow. Gow made a very nice move in a backdoor cut. He got a nice uh, clean feed. Uh, they missed the layup, or I should say they didn't get the layup. Uh, ball goes to the young man at the line, number 25, Dahi Quinn, and uh, he's going to get three. He sticks the first, sticks the second. Coleman Ross checking back in for the Presidents. And there's three. Nicely done. 22 to seven, North Quincy on top after Quinn makes all three foul shots. Nice look up court there by Joe Manton to find Coleman Ross to break that pressure. Try and get down low to Caleb Parson Gomes, they do, and foul's called on the floor against Q Scott. Yeah, off the ball, meaning the ball was out top here at the three-point arc, and down low, there were two guys really going at it in the lane. And the official caught Kuna Scott uh, for bodying a little too much. Malik Lawson, top of the key three is good. Nice job by Malik. 
as the Presidents continue to battle here. It's another open court pick. This one did not result in uh, bodily harm. Off balance shot down by, uh, by Ethan Gao, excuse me. And fight for the rebound, it results in a jump ball, North Quincy possession. Nice job by Zach Donahue of getting in there off the rebound and uh, tying it up. So um, we've got four minutes to go here, John, and North Quincy boys have done what did not happen in the girls game. They've uh, been able to stretch things out a little bit and uh, take control of the game here um, in this first half. Doing most of their work here in this second quarter. So we've got North Quincy's Uber fan across the way trying to fire up the crowd. You can see him there working hard. Go ahead. I'll remind all of our viewers you can log on to QATV's website at QATV.org for our program schedules, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. So again, I encourage you to go on to QATV.org. Four oh six left to go here in the first half. Oh, terrific ball movement there off the inbound. That was a designed play off the inbound under the hoop where North just went boom, boom, boom and got the ball to Quinn uh, for a layup opportunity. But a nice defensive play, get tied up down low and it's President's ball. We're under four minutes here. Ball's taken away there by Q Scott. Quickly up now to Ethan Gao. The win. Short jumper is good. Nice job by North Quincy. No hesitation there by UN. Might just call him Kobe. <laughs> I like when you have the first name Kobe, you can't waste it if you're a basketball player, right? So um, number four is now officially henceforth going forward going to be Kobe. Good for him. He's only a freshman. Oh, so you're going to get four more years, Jim. Yeah, <laughs> or three so more years, excuse me. Maybe we'll end up by his senior year calling the uh, late great Laker the other Kobe. We'll see. Nice drive to the hole there by Caleb Parson goes for two. Nice drive and a nice finish. That's terrific work in traffic. And the presidents remain determined and hanging around here. Nicely done. Ethan Gao, strong take to the hole. He puts it away. Terrific job by Gao. Strong take. Coach Barrett, it's interesting. It's 26-12. Uh, um, he is uh, working hard here. And um, one of the things about Barrett we know is, as I mentioned, the tournament experience. He's trying to make certain that the boys maintain their intensity, stay focused, and he's trying different things here. And he's really staying on them and making them work hard. Um, there's great respect for the Quincy presidents, but there's also planning as the season goes forward. And uh, that's what that's what a lot of this is about, John. 303 left to go here in the first half. North with a 26-12 lead over the presidents. A uh, quick shout out and thank you to the Quincy High School Athletic Director, Kevin Mahoney, for assisting us here today at Quincy High School to get things set up and arranged so we can provide coverage uh, to everyone here in the city of Quincy. So thank you to Kevin. And I should also thank uh, JJ Niamke who helped us down at North Quincy about a month ago with all the stuff that he did for us as well. And I've mentioned this before, but it's true. I want to thank the athletic directors who really do uh, help us out at QA TV, make sure we can do, get all the games covered as possible and uh, do as much as we can. So big thank you to uh, Kevin and JJ for all they do. Yeah, and both athletic directors really contribute greatly to their school community. Uh, they're terrific gentlemen and um, really a pleasure to deal with. Um, 
And uh, you mentioned Kevin. We're in Kevin's nest today, and he has been very gracious. He's always got that pleasant smile and the anything I can do attitude. Nice look down low by Lawson to find Caleb Parson Gomes, and he finishes it off. Terrific job there. A great finish by Caleb. He was uh, surrounded and um, showed great poise. North going to a half court 1-3-1 there on that possession, really attacking the ball. Oh, what a pass by Kobe. Down low. That was a bunny at the end. All set up by the fine work of Kobe. Great finish by Dylan Clifford, who had super position and put it right in off the box that, that nobody could see, John. <laughs> Taken away there by Jahi Quinn. And Quinn goes down and throws it down. Yes, sir. What a finish. And the stands over here that are packed with North Quincy students on their feet. And uh, North Quincy, you know, oftentimes, well, I won't say often, but there's a phrase in this game, press the talent button. And that is not so much what's gone on here where a team presses the talent button and just takes off and runs away. North Quincy is an aggressive, hard-working team, John. They're talented, yes, but they have guys here who are just really working hard, executing nicely. Uh, their freshman point guard, Kobe, you saw, he just set up Dylan Clifford. I think you or I could have finished that play, John. It was all the great work by Kobe, but the fact is Dylan knew where to be, moving without the ball. He was down low. Perfect position and a great feed by Kobe. And uh, the hard work continues on the defensive end as well. So North Quincy doing it on both ends of the floor. And uh, they've doubled down on North on Quincy High. But uh, Coach Perry's still working hard. He called that timeout with 150 to go. And uh, he wants to have every possession be a precious one for the presidents before the half. Carson Gomes was trying to drive and quickly that lane was blocked off by Ethan Gao and Dahi Quinn. Four in the shot clock, Malika Lawson with it. And loose ball and shot clock violation. I think the official called the ball out of bounds. He signaled something about the sideline. So. Terrific ball movement there. Just very smooth, crisp ball movement. And uh, Ethan Gao, top of the key, bang. So beautifully executed play there. Their half-court offense, offense is just as effective as their break, John. Red Raiders really doing it on in all manners here on the offensive side of the play. Lost open ball. for three, a little long on that. Rebounded by Coleman Ross. Shot there by Donahue, a little long. Rebounded by North. Under a minute now to go here in the half. Kobe can't get it to go. Rebounded by Quinn. He can't get it to go. Finally controlled by Zach Donahue for the Presidents. Yeah, nice rebound and traffic by Donahue. And Quinn. great pursuit by Dahi Quinn. Dylan Clifford with a block from behind. And he was trying to save it, and it'll be President's ball. Yeah, great hustle by Clifford there, just really working hard. Dylan has been a real presence inside here for the uh, Red Raiders. Terrific job. 15 on the shot clock now for the Presidents. About a Six second differential between game and shot. And three there is good by Joe Manton. Manton's had a nice first half for himself. He's very comfortable shooting in this gym. You see that. Oh, nice job Ball by Malik away. Lawson. Gets a shot off a three and no good. Great play there by Lawson. And then 
to get down court and open for a shot, but cannot get it to go. Nonetheless, we are at halftime here at Quincy High School where the visiting Raiders have a 33-17 lead over the Presidents. Yeah, nice job by Malik Lawson there to pick Kobe's pocket and uh, create a shot opportunity, but. All right, well, Jim and I will take a timeout here at the half. Again, North Quincy on top by a score of 33-17. We'll be back with second half coverage in just one moment. Welcome back everyone to Marone McClim Gymnasium. We're at the half. North Quincy leads the Presidents by a score of 33 to 17. North will start the third quarter with possession first. Now we had an abbreviated warm up due to a lot of halftime activity. So we'll see how the boys come out. Uh, it was kind of a long half and uh, not a lot of time. Well, it's like Malik Lawson got what he needed <laughs> at halftime, so. Nice steal and finish by Malik. Oh, what a no-look pass by Kobe. Kobe just sees the floor beautifully, and that was a terrific pass, wasn't it, John? Yeah, he was looked to his right and his bullet pass right down low to Colm Geary. Gary gets fouled, and he'll go to line to shoot two. Yeah, the uh, guys down low, if they work hard for position and they remain alert, Kobe's all over that action, so nicely done. Gary sticks the first and comes up a little short on the second. Looks like North is going to settle in for a man-to-man. -man. No, it's their 1-3-1, one, one, John. They've got a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense with uh, nice job by Manton. Well, not quite what he hoped for on the finish. Quinn comes down with the loose ball. Yeah, they have Dahi Quinn out top on a 1-3-1, one, one, and that's just because uh, he's, he's a really ruthless and aggressive defender, so. Really sets a nice tone here on this D. Shot there by the president's uh, Johnny Garcia Acosta, no good. Quinn goes baseline and can't get it to go. Nice defense there by Garcia Acosta. Colm Gary gets the loose ball, can't get it to go though. Goes into the hands of Coleman Ross for the president's. Well. As I had mentioned, uh, halftime was long, and the players had both uh, a long break and no opportunity to warm up, and that's shown in the early uh, play here. Malik Lawson with a, uh, a layup off a steal on a bit of a sloppy pass, and then um, we've had, uh, what, one foul shot for the Red Raiders, so not quite the start the coaches want as two minutes is uh, elapsed here in this third quarter. Lawson steps up to take the three, can't get it to go. Nice quick outlet by Kobe. Zach Taylor drives down and let's see, a travel is called on Taylor. Drag that back foot, nice defense there by Malik Lawson to get in front of him. <sighs> yes, that was the Eastern Euro step. <laughs> That, uh, that got a whistle on that one. Donahue trying to drive in, can't draw the foul. I don't know what happened there, to be honest with you. And then Manton with a little poke steal. And he kept poking at the ball. Now, see, the official should have whistled that, just to even a warning, because if they're not careful, this game could get very chippy. Even though the uh, score right now is, shows North Quincy kind of controlling things. The fact of the matter is there's no quit whatsoever in these presidents. They're playing very physically. And uh, right now the chippiness is uh, kicked up a notch or two. So we'll have to watch that. Quinn at the line, he's gonna be shooting two. The 
Looks like the officials came over to clarify who that foul was called on, and they get Coleman Ross for the foul. Quinn still at the line of shoot two and makes the first. Yeah, Quinn is just so comfortable on a basketball court. You know, he makes everything look effortless, and he walks around like he's totally relaxed. And then there's just an explosion of energy when he does things. So it's an interesting uh, dichotomy there when you watch that young man play basketball. All right, looked like that ball had gone out of bounds off the Presidents, and they're going to get a break, I'd say, that uh, they maintain possession. Yeah, there were a few black shirts that agreed with you on that. <laughs> well, Malik got a little too cute with that shot. Fight mm. down low, and battle between Coleman Ross and Nate Caldwell results in a jump Joe ball, Caldwell. and it will remain Quincy possession. possession. Yeah, Caldwell was all over the basketball there. He's playing very aggressively. Manton open for three on the inbounds, and he sticks it. Terrific job by Manton. Manton, 11 points here tonight. Yeah, he's uh, been very comfortable out there with the three-pointer. And, and Dahi Quinn gets called for the offensive foul as Manton stays in there. And Quinn a little slow getting up. I know he's just tying his shoe, actually. Well, I suspect that part of that is a bit of unhappiness over what happened. And uh, Coach Barrett has seen enough. Not happy with uh, how this third quarter has gone. But as I said, John, you know, I don't want to belabor the point, but halftime just really sucked the energy out of the kids, the players, you know. Uh, went on too long, and they didn't have any time to warm up. Here's one gentleman. I don't know if we can get a shot of this, but here he's coming across on the president's side now. That young man has been working hard. He's from North Quincy High School. He's going to come around this way now. We should give him some camera time. He has been working hard all game. He's someone that halftime did not affect. And uh, he's starting to get some fan response from the Quincy high side. And there's the North Quincy crowd that's uh, used to his, uh, well, he's getting a little thanks now. Good for him. He's got to be in terrific shape to maintain his pace. And <laughs> he's still going, so. North Quincy super fan. Have them run up and down in front of the player's bench. See if you can't <laughs> fire them up a little. So North set up and it's 1-3-1, but Dahi Quinn's going to at least show a presence three-quarter court and more. 36-24, North on top. Crossing Gomes driving in. Can't get it to go, but he draws the foul. Now Coach Barrett... Yelled out immediately, that's you, telling the player who didn't get to where he had to be um, that the reason for that call was that he didn't shift well. So um, what Coach Barrett's doing here, you can tell, is he's still he's working with his team. He's trying to make sure that they execute properly because uh, these are the types of things that are going to be important in the tournament, the ability to change defenses and uh, have the players still execute. So, well, that's a disappointment there for a Red Raider perspective. The missed shot and the offensive rebound by Quincy. Lawson's three-point shot went in and out. Couldn't get it to roll. That had gone in. The Quincy bench was going to explode as they was right in front of them. Quinn, nice look there for Dylan Clifford, who's just checked into the ball game, and he puts it in. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the explosion by Quinn, and then the nice feed to Clifford. Clifford continues to find his way down to that right block and then patiently await a pass. He's got a few teammates who have been uh, very good to him, uh, but he gets the position. He's a smart, crafty guy. Um, He's big, and he does what his coach tells him. He does an excellent job. The other thing we should comment on, John, is Coach Perry is up and down the sidelines. 
Uh, the bench, the coaches, the players, very animated. Uh, there's been no quit in the presidents whatsoever. They're continuing to work really hard here. Lawson skip pass over the Parson Gomes. Seven on the shot clock. And he was trying to get over to Joe Manton. The pass gets intercepted by Kobe Nguyen. All right, so they're running a set play here. Nice job. Dahi Quinn a long three, and he drains it. Well behind the arc was Quinn, and he puts it down. Yeah, it was a nice pass. Clifford had actually created a shot opportunity for himself, but was he had his eyes up, and he was looking, and he saw Quinn, so he kicked it out to him. Kobe to Quinn for the finish. I mean, it's just an explosion with the Red Raiders here. That's four quick points and 11 seconds. Quincy's had difficulty with this 1-3-1 one, one zone that North Quincy has been playing. And just oh, as I say that, Coleman Ross gets inside. open. Down low for Ross to finish it off and he'll go to the line to make it a three point play. Yeah, terrific pass to Ross by uh, Caleb Parsons Gomes. Just a nice little drop down bounce pass. Ross finished and he's going to the line for an old fashioned three. So just as North Quincy exploded, Quincy with a nice offensive series, attacks the 1-3-1, one, ends up with a layup and a three point opportunity here. Well done. Kobe is uh, over on the sidelines here, getting his uh, hands checked. Uh, he's got a little problem with his left hand that he's got a trainer check it, or his right hand rather. We'll hope he's okay. Alex Pham has checked in for Kobe. Pham swings it across over to Taylor. Quinn shot, no good. Rebounded by Coleman Ross for the Presidents. Three there by, Di excuse me, by Ty Neal is no good. Tell you, the presidents just keep banging the boards here. Uh, that was an attempt at a skip pass. Uh, Joe Manton, who's a capable three-point shooter, was out here on the arc, and uh, very alertly seeing him was Ty Neal, but unfortunately the rim got in the way. So it's going to be North Quincy ball. Kyle Cruz checking in now for the Presidents. 145 left to go in the third quarter. Nice look for Pham to find Dahi Quinn. He can't get it to go. And fighting for the rebound uh, was Dylan Clifford. Yeah, Clifford did a nice job. I'll tell you, on that play, uh, Quinn went up for jumper and Clifford was open down low and I think uh, Quinn was thinking he'd drop it to Dylan and wasn't decisive so he missed the little jumper but uh, Red Raiders up by 16 43 27 they played this 1-3-1 the whole quarter with uh, moderate effect Quincy's done a nice job of being patient and aggressive on the boards and um, so I don't think Coach Barrett got out of this 1-3-1 exercise what he hoped for, although his players now have uh, been through the drill and uh, he can make some corrections and hopefully have crisper execution when they wield this little wet bit of weaponry during the tournament. Nice ball movement inside and Clifford finishes. Just absolutely terrific work by Clifford down low. He's been shooting layups all night, John, but he's creating those opportunities. Well, he did a nice job using his body to create some extra space and push his way down and put it up for the easy two points. Yeah, yeah. Dylan is uh, very stocky. He's got uh, massive legs, and he uses that leg strength, and he's just uh, he's got to have a uh, 35-pound 30 pound advantage, and I'm talking muscle-pound advantage on the kids that he's playing against down low. So he's playing big. 
Three point shot from the corner, no good by Zach Taylor. Ross with the rebound. Nice rebound in traffic by Ross. Malik Lawson with the ball now for the presence, trying to drive in. Finds it over to Donahue. And that shot's going to get blocked. Donahue says he got hit in the hand. Well, I think he got hit after. The ball was already gone and heading out of bounds, and then the, the hit occurred. And nice and take there by Nicely Donahue. done. Yeah. That's what we're seeing tonight, John. Quincy High has remained determined, notwithstanding some of the difficulty they face tonight. And a foul called down on the floor with 5.5 seconds left. Hey, there are times when uh, Dahi Quinn, he just steps on that gas pedal and does not worry about what's in front of him whatsoever. Play for the rebound. Q Scott, who's checked in, had the last attempt at it, rolls around and out at the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three quarters of play, North Quincy 45 and the President's 29 as we head to the final frame here at Quincy High School. Yeah, Kunu Scott on that rebound action there. He really stayed with it, stayed very determined. A nice job. So we're looking at 45-29 here, John, as the third quarter comes to a close. Uh, Quincy did a very nice job of hanging in there. Um, they're still very active and everything. Uh, they've got a high hill to climb against these uh, Red Raiders. Um, I'm looking for something here in the fourth quarter as far as one of those North Quincy explosions strong. We haven't seen that tonight. Um, it's been a combination of Quincy's effectiveness defensively, uh, but North Quincy's had some struggles offensively as well, so we'll see what happens here in this fourth quarter. Um, Coach Barrett, you know, they've got the, it's the North and the Quincy game, so that's big to the boys, but in addition, Coach Barrett is clearly trying to make sure his team is uh, stays focused, playing at a high level, and gets ready for the tournament. We mentioned North Quincy with a 14 and four record, and they are currently the number five ranked team in Division Two. Remember, MIA has gone to an All-State tournament this year, so all teams in Division Two get ranked, and the top 32 will go to the tournament. Shot there by Nate Caldwell, a little long, and goes out of bounds. It'll be President's ball. Yeah, I, I'd love to see the MIAA somehow um, kind of mothballed in something. Every year there's a new this and a different that and a, you know, bigger, better, improved, but um, they, it, everything's just overly complicated, you know? Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the tournament format works here. Then we're hearing they may be in the garden, they may not. Whoa, oh, big throw down there by Dahi Quinn. Man, does he bring energy. Malik Lawson coming right back down, trying to answer though. Nice draw by Malik. Driving in, finds some space, and puts it in for the two. Ethan Gow is checked back in for the, for the Raiders. Oh, terrific ball movement down low by North Quincy. Just bang, bang, bang. That's uh, really great ball movement by the Red Raiders. Q. Scott finished that last one off. He has four points here tonight. Nice, nice dribble penetration. Yep. Zach Donahue with the two points for the presence. Whoa. Dylan Clifford getting a little uncharacteristic there. <laughs> Donahue right back down, and he can't finish it off, but he'll go to the line for two foul shots as he gets fouled by Ethan Gow. Yeah, Donahue doing a terrific job of 
remaining aggressive, taking the ball to the hoop. Um, he's had a couple of layup opportunities he's finished with. And then in addition to that, now uh, he's created foul opportunities. Getting to the line here. And calmly drops the first. One and two for Donahue. Q Scott, nice sidestep there, and he puts it in. That was a terrific move by Scott. Now this is a uh, nice, nice take to the hoop by Malik, but he got stopped. I was going to say, this is one of the advantages North Quincy has. So they go from uh, Quinn. Oh, nice di dish down low. They went from Quinn as the uh, quarterback, the man out top of the 1-3-1. One, one, and then they slide over. Nice take to the hoop by Malik Lawson. But uh, North Quincy's uh, last time down, the 1-3-1 one, one was quarterback by Nate Caldwell at the point on D. Scott crossover and then was trying to hit feed enough to Dillard and he does and can't get it to go. Clifford was on rebound and this time he finishes it off. Wow. Clifford is playing big down low. Just having a terrific night here. Lawson loses his dribble. Ethan Gow with it now coming down and can't get it to go but right there to pick it up is Nate Caldwell. Loose ball coming up with it. Quickly up now to Gao. Nice pass by Clifford. And uh, a very creative play. We're going to give him credit for that being all planned. Gao put it off the backboard, knowing he had trailers coming along. And uh, they finished up. There's some smiles on the north bench, and uh, Coach Barrett is inquiring of Gao. Uh, whether that was planned or not. Well, from this uh, able-eyed reporter's view, that was definitely a planned uh, assist by Gao. So North Quincy has got the lead up to 19. They're comfortable, John. Um, it's uh, Quincy has hung around and battled the entire game. There's been no quit in them. But uh, at this point, they've got to feel a little dispirited as uh, they had cut the lead to 12 and looked like they might be able to get it to single digits. Uh, but then things just got away from them. I talked about the explosion factor of the Red Raiders. And it hasn't been quite as dramatic as we might see, but it has been effective. They've got the lead at uh, 19 with about four minutes to go. And when uh, that's the case, and you've been knocking at the door all night without success, um, it can be dispiriting time for the presidents. We'll see. During the timeout, I was able to see Kobe Nguyen on the north sideline, and he had a bag of ice on his hand. So hopefully he's okay. I'm sure we've seen the last of him tonight uh, with that while he has that bag on his hand. North has come out of the 1-3-1, one, one, gone back to their man-to-man. -man. And uh, a nice tip in there by the Presidents. I don't know if I call it a nice tip in. I think Quinn tipped that in. But uh, there was a little volleyball going on under the hoop, definitely. Ross was involved. I would, have, I would give him that last hoop. And travel called on Donahue. So with 3.50 to go, it's actually uh, um, multiples of 19 here. It's 57.38. Problem is, Norse got three multiples and Quincy only two. Oh, look at this play. Oh, nice job, Donahue. Hustle. Throws it into the court. Oh. And. 
Try to see who it was that picked it up for the president. That was number 25 who picked it up, Ty Neal. And he'll go to the line to shoot too. Uh, I wish we had a replay deck going tonight, John. There's Tommy points right there. What a terrific play here along the sideline. Great hustle. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Although the, uh, the outcome might be determined, there is just no quit in this Quincy President squad. Again, Neil at the line to shoot two, and this is the first. He missed them both, Manton battling. <laughs> Unsuccessfully, it's going to be North Quincy ball with full court pressure from the Presidents. Man-to-man -man pressure. Jimmy Phipps right up on Dahi Quinn. Nice defense there by Phipps. And turnover is caused. Joe Manton slow to get up behind the action. Finally gets across into the front court. And no. ball comes loose. Well, what happened to Manton was a uh, Dylan Clifford pick. Quinn ran Manton into a pick that just absolutely leveled him. And to his credit, Manton stayed in the play, but he really got laid out. Ethan Gow with that last three-pointer for the Raiders. Yeah, amidst all the chaos, Ethan just calmly drills a three-pointer, and there's a nice steal. This is a good call by the official. As I said, this the chippy factor can explode at any point with these teams. Uh, earlier, there was some chippiness starting to get a little out of control. And um, I think the official recognized that there was some over exuberance that deserved a whistle there. So good whistle. Things quieted down a bit. And let's see what happens in this final 2.30. Dahi Quinn is checked out for the night and taking his place is Luke Perrone. Shot there, no good. Manton for three, can't get it to go. Gal comes down with a rebound. Nice job by Caldwell. They're saying Dylan Clifford started with the ball before he dribbled, so they called a travel. It's 60-38. North Quincy quietly has continually extended this lead, but the presidents continue to battle, John. It's been a very impressive outing, not necessarily on the scoreboard, but in the, uh, the manner of play by the presidents. There's been no quit whatsoever, and they've just worked hard, buzzer to buzzer. Christian Montero Spagnolo has checked in for the Presidents. And Q Scott with a two from the foul line there. Manton driving to the hole and he's gonna get fouled. I think he uh, called a jump ball. Oh, I guess the official he did. actually called a jump ball, but the possession arrow is going Quincy's way. Joe Manton a little upset with that. He thought he was going to the foul line. And he's uh, surprised to learn otherwise, so. North Quincy pressuring the inbound. Rebound and brought down by Perrone. Drive there is no good by Danny Bellotti. 
Lottie doing his best Charles Barkley impression, trying to dribble down into the block there, but can't get it to go. Hope he doesn't have his golf swing, right? <laughs> have you ever seen that tape of Charles Barkley? It's quite Swinging interesting to say pump. the least, yeah. It's just awesome. I love Charles Barkley. Donahue up top now to Ontario Spagnolo. He drives in, he kicks it out to Kyle Cruz, and shots no good. Nice rebound in traffic, and here comes Pilati again. And they're gonna call a blocking foul on the presence on number 12, Jimmy Phipps. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yep, Danny's gonna go to the line here and uh, have two opportunities to get himself in the, uh, in the scorebook. Manny Aguayo coming in now for the Presidents. Luke Mordas has checked in as well for the Presidents. And Mordas comes down with a rebound. Ontario Spagnuolo shot, no good, a little short. Whoa. Joe Bates into the game for North Quincy. Driving there and getting it to go is number 12, Nate Davis. Tell you what, Nate's a crowd favorite. Got a nice eruption from the North Quincy crowd. There's a real strong North Quincy presence here. It's nice to see. Davis makes the foul shot. 30 seconds to go here in the game. Aguayo driving in. Can't get it to go, gets his rebound though. Fans cheering loudly here for Manny Aguayo. Get the ball to Jimmy. Well, John with 11 seconds left, 65-38 North Quincy. Um, the presidents with a couple more games. I mean, if they continue playing with this determination, be interesting to see what happens when they play uh, like a Milton High or one of one of the teams they're supposed to see the next two days. Because they certainly played the entire game here. They played very determined defense. Um, they just don't have quite. They're not at the same level as this Red Raider squad that came in here tonight and really performed impressively so as the players uh, go through the line here which in this rivalry is sometimes an exercise in obligatory behavior uh, but nonetheless they're shaking hands and uh, congratulating each other it's a terrific outcome here and John I'm sure we're going to try to do one of the tournament games if uh, North Quincy again the MIAA and its wisdom it's all a mystery of what's going to happen. You'd expect <laughs> a team like the Red Raiders with the record they have in the season they've had and their position in the Patriot Conference, you would expect that uh, they'd host a game, and let's hope they do. Yeah, right now they are in position. Again, they are um, number six seed in Division Two, excuse me, number five seed in Division Two. So it looks like they're going to be in position to host a home game when the playoffs start in a week or so. Uh, real quick rundown, some of the scores here for you. Leading the way for North Quincy, Dahi Quinn, he had 16 points. Dylan Clifford had 10 points. Ethan Gao had eight. Nate Caldwell had eight. Q Scott had eight. Zach Taylor with seven. For Quincy High School, Joe Manton led the way with 13 points. Malik Lawson had 10. Caleb Parson Gomes had eight. And Zach Donahue had five for the Presidents. Real quick, I want to thank all of our staff and volunteers who came out here to make this game possible. On camera, we had Scott Daniels and Ryan McWade. In the truck, Chris Potter, our engineer, and our director was Peter Dari. So again, final score here from Quincy High School, North Quincy 65 and Quincy High School 38. For Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Clary. 
Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. We'll see you next time.